I've been asked to talk about diet and cancer. There are lots of confusion, direct contradictions with natural therapeutics and diet. Mainstream medicine doesn't offer any particular diet. It does not recognize the link of sugar causing cancer to grow. In fact, patients tell me they go to the best in the country quotes and they give them cookies while they're getting chemo. Be that what it may, uh, as we know, CT PET scans are based on the fact that cancer cells love sugar. They inject 18 fluorodeoxyglucose before they do the CAT scan because the glucose gets the 18 fluoro, the fluorescing part of the molecule, into the cancer cells. And we know that there have been many studies, in fact, the Cancer Research Journal 1983 and 1990 discussed that cancer cells have many times the insulin receptor sites than normal cells. Also, uh, in a uh, major study in Heidelberg, Dr. Holm 1996 showed that cancer cells have 30 times the avidity for glucose. And it goes on and on. There are lots of research showing cancer cells love sugar. New York Times, a 12 page download, April 13, 2011, 12 pages. Is sugar toxic by Dr. Gary Taubes, T A U B E S. Shows that cancer is increased with diets that have lots of sugar. He discussed the colony in Antarctica from 1967 to 1980. They only had two incidences of breast cancer. We exported our most deadly export, fast food, and their breast cancer incident rose to the same as ours. He showed direct correlation to sugar. So one thing that most people and doctors will agree, alternative, unfortunate, not mainstream docs, sugar should be eliminated from the diet. Processed food should be eliminated from the diet. Eating organically as possible. And you have, again, extremes. You have books talking about being a vegan, raw food only. And then the most recent uh, concept by Dr. Thomas Zeefried, he wrote a prestigious book, very well documented with literature in 2013, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. He recommends a high fat diet from animal origin, actually. Of course, the animals should be uh, organic, uh, free range animals. So you could argue if water's wet, when you turn on the news, we see this. So the point is that uh, there are many ways to get to Rome. Perhaps raw veganism can slow cancer down. Perhaps eating mainly fatty foods can slow cancer down because cancer cells cannot metabolize fat for energy. So maybe there's more than one way of doing it. And it gets deeper than that. And I understand all the diets, the physiology, the chemistry. So I am very fluid with the diet plan. For instance, Budwick diet, where you're utilizing organic cottage cheese, organic flaxseed. And as you know, uh, Dr. Budwick was a seven time Nobel Prize nominee. And I think there is some credence to her concept of how to kill the cancer with flaxseed and cottage cheese. I utilize her diet when I have a patient that is dwindled. It comes to me after being beat up by high dose conventional chemo or the cancer itself has taken the life out of that patient. So the Budwick diet could help that patient build up and at the same time not feed the cancer. There is an interesting diet called CAT, C-A-A-T, Controlled Amino Acid Therapy. This diet is, is very interesting because it leaves out certain nutrients that DNA needs to replicate, such as B6, leucine, isoleucine, methionine. By leaving out these amino acids and B6, DNA 
it cannot replicate and multiply. And as you know, cancer cells are cells that are rapidly multiplying, taking over your body. And that's called, again, controlled amino acid therapy. I've seen some good results with that as well. There is fasting, juice fasting. Uh, it goes on and on. Many different diets, and there isn't one in particular that I am fixated on. I think they all have merit, all have a place, but different patients require different things for different reasons. Whether it is a different type of cancer or what state they're in, I will select a different diet. But the golden rule is, of course, no sugars, no processed food, uh, trying to eat organically as possible, drinking lots of water to clean out the system. Yes, detoxification is important. Cleaning out the swamp, as some of my colleagues call it, uh, it very important. Uh, different nutraceuticals, herbals, vitamins, supplements, all important. But again, it should be individualized. There isn't one answer to this question, which diet is the best, except for, I think, the things that we just mentioned, no sugar, no processed food, etc. So you have to go to a practitioner that understands the various uh, diets out there to know what would be best suited for you at a particular time. Also, if you're getting treatment, you want to know how to utilize your diet correctly and not interfere with that treatment program. Whether it's radiation, chemo, surgery, or other natural therapeutics, you need to know what supplements can interfere or help the treatment that you're getting. So you have to go to a, a, a doc that understands both straight conventional and alternative medicine and puts it together and we call that complementary integrative medicine. If you have any questions, please call us at 631-361-6160. Thank you.